producer of In Stitches, which will be performing Friday and Saturday night at 8 p.m. And that's a show you won't want to miss. And Dr. Patterson is the director of the Student Health Center, and he's here to answer any medical questions or concerns that you have. And I think we'll get started now since we've taken quite a bit of time already. Well, first off, I'm Toby Richard, or T.R. Hotchkiss. I'm here because I have AIDS. I, uh, um, February, uh, no, January 27th was when I was diagnosed with it, uh, down in Dallas. Uh, and I, uh, my parents live up here. My father teaches statistics, which may be good or bad, I don't know. Um, and I uh, came up here to convalesce, to get better. Uh, I've been here since uh, February, probably third, I think, uh, when I since I've been up here. Uh, I have full-fledged AIDS, and feel free to ask me a question about it. I, I haven't gotten afraid of it yet. Um, I guess that's enough. Go ahead, introduce yourself. I'm Karen Phillips, and I'm a <coughs> member of the AIDS study program. Um, the buddy program is, is designed to train people uh, to work with people who have AIDS and uh, some intensive training over a few weeks time that you receive and then you are assigned to a buddy, to a person with AIDS and uh, you're, from then on it's between you and your buddy what you can do for this person. Um, from grocery shopping to helping them clean their house to going for walks with them to simply being an ear. <coughs> Listening is very important. Um, you can also be a part of, of helping with their family, helping their families deal with this and, and deal with the disease. And it's extremely rewarding and I strongly urge people who, who think they might want to do this to contact the coalition, the AIDS coalition. We will be offering training up here in January, uh, we hope. And Liz Rachel, the director of the coalition, can tell you more about that if you call the coalition. Hi, I'm Dr. Patterson. Uh, I'm here just to uh, answer any medical questions uh, that you may have. We at the Health Center have been uh, involved in a steadily increasing way with this uh, virus since uh, the early 80s. Uh, we have been uh, a part of uh, helping form the AIDS Coalition, uh, which is a really valuable community resource that uh, I would recommend uh, to you for uh, your energies and, and support. AIDS uh, is a part of HIV, and AIDS is a part of every community. Uh, it is something we uh, need to learn to live with and deal with, and it's good to see so many people here today um, talking about their concerns. Well, I guess now we open it up for questions. Does anyone have any questions? Don't, Don't do this to me. Really. <laughs> yes. I was wondering um, how many cases of AIDS we have seen at Iowa State University since maybe um, it's been recognized. We don't keep a running stat on how many cases at Iowa State. Certainly there are AIDS uh, within our community. Student, have been within student uh, and staff at university. We just don't have a running total of uh, our particular community. Uh, it's not a closed community, so it really doesn't quite open. We need to we need to realize that AIDS in any part of the world is a problem for us here as well. Yeah. Uh, there is no cure uh, at this point. There will be at a later date, but right now we're kind of at a plateau. We uh, know what causes it. We know how to prevent it. We don't really know how to cure it yet. We can slow it down a lot, but uh, I will always have AIDS. The 
question is uh, progress on cure. A great, uh, agree very much with what Toby's saying. Uh, there will never be a cure once the virus is in, in uh, the system. It's not expected that that will happen. Research is uh, aimed at uh, uh, methods of prevention, immunization, uh, and at dealing with the secondary infections that this virus causes to uh, prolong life and uh, hopefully turn it into a chronic disease rather than one that uh, has historically been fatal. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm on uh, Social Security and Medicaid. Um, I, uh, oh, she wanted to know what I'm doing now. Uh, do I have a job? Um, I'm on Social Security and Medicaid is how I make money to pay for the car and gas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I try and do some freelance things, but uh, that doesn't always work. Uh, I live with my folks, so I'm getting room and board. Uh, I have everything that I need. I don't have uh, wonderful luxuries and that kind of stuff because I, I can't work. I can only put in maybe three to four hours of work uh, a day. Uh, I found that out when I was doing registration the other day and um, I was one of the uh, fee assessors. And after four hours, I was ready to go. It was, it was kind of hard to do. <clears throat> so that's one of the things that AIDS will do to you. It really slows you down a lot. Now, I got through that day, and I could probably get through others, but it, that's the liability of AIDS. It just slows you down. Yeah? It sounds like you're getting good support from your family. Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to go in and out of crime. Uh, because this is, uh, if anything, it's a very powerful emotional kind of feeling uh, that uh, I've been living with my folks for nine months. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not. Um, <clears throat> uh, yes, they're very supportive. They're very uh, kind. Uh, I have my own room. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've got everything I really need. Uh, and I, now I also have time to go out and do these kinds of things, to do things like in stitches, uh, so that I can provide something and give a return to people. Uh, dealing with this uh, crisis. Uh, someday there will be a cure, but right now there isn't. And right now, uh, I'm doing everything I can to make uh, the burden lighter for people. Uh, I can give some help. Uh, we've raised some money. Uh, in Stitches has raised over $4,000, uh, which will go to getting this quilt here, which has gone to get this quilt here. There's a number of interesting panels that I see. Um, but I, that, that's it, that's, that, that's the job I have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she wants to know how I feel physically, uh, if the AIDS is catching up with me and, and draining me more than it should. Uh, it, it all depends on the day. Uh, if I'm working hard or I'm involved in something that is of interest to me, I'll work hard on it. And uh, uh, it just drains you. Uh, it's like, what, uh, like doing registration. I should have been able to put in uh, eight hours. But even just working on a computer and all I was doing was handwork, uh, I got tireder and tireder and more cranky and uh, Eventually, I quit for the day. I got done with it. But it, it is a very draining uh, kind of disease. Uh, it takes all the energy out of you. Back there. I was living in Texas at the time. She wants to know how I got it. Uh, <clears throat> and I uh, was going to work back and forth, all this kind of stuff. I was temporary. And uh, uh, I began to get this kind of upper respiratory ailment kind of stuff that you get every winter. Uh, and I thought, well, all I have to do is take a hot shower and uh, uh, go to bed early, and in a couple of days I'll be fine. Well, I wasn't fine. I developed double pneumonia. Uh, and uh, I was, it, I sat there for about a month 
not, I went to the doctor and he kept giving me these antibiotics that didn't do anything. They just kind of made me ache and feel funny. Uh, so, um, <laughs> I'm experiencing whole blanks in my head. Every once in a while I get to a spot and I have to figure out where I've been. Um, uh, how, okay, how I got it. Um, and then I just, I collapsed. I ended up in bed. I uh, couldn't get up. Um, and so eventually I called the ambulance and they came and got me. And I spent four days in uh, Arlington Hospital in Texas, the tune of $12,000. If nothing else deters you, uh, don't get eight because it's expensive. <laughs> it, it really costs a lot of money. And since then I have uh, had uh, uh, meningitis, spinal meningitis, and that was eight days for $8,000 here in Ames. So I, I'm not going to see the end of this bill. I will forever be, uh, 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 I've always got a new cure coming at me. Uh, there's always something new that's found out or something to take care of a, an ailment and uh, uh, <laughs> you got to pay for it. Uh, um, let's see, I guess that's it. That's uh, how I contracted it. Uh, I got over it quickly or at least I got over the symptoms quickly. Uh, uh, I beat the pneumonia as soon as they gave me the right medicine. And the same thing with the meningitis. I got the right medicine and uh, was fine after two or three days. Um, I have this little thing here that uh, they feed me intravenously with this. Uh, when I, it gets really bad, uh, you know, if they can just give me a shot, that's fine. But I had, uh, the meningitis I had, I had to take uh, uh, intravenously for like six hours. And this stuff was uh, shrinking my veins and closing them up. So I, I get halfway through the treatment and the thing would stop. Uh, nothing would happen. So they put this thing into me and it works much better. If, if you ever have to make a decision, go ahead and go for this because it really makes a big difference. It helps. Uh, but otherwise, it's the only thing that's really happened to me that uh, I've had to uh, get operated on and medicine, that kind of stuff. This is the biggest change that I've had to this point. Yeah? You talked about the cost. Do you have experience? No, I didn't. Working as a temporary, when you get into that position, uh, they want to know how much it costs and uh, if uh, I had insurance. Uh, no, I didn't. I was temporary. Uh, you, as a temporary, you work when the job comes along. Uh, you don't get paid or any kind of uh, money in that nature. Uh, I was a good temporary. I usually worked uh, uh, 20 hours a day and uh, 40 hours a week. I very seldom had a vacation. But by nature of the, the beast, uh, if you weren't working, you weren't making any money. Uh, you and I didn't have money to spend on insurance. I just didn't have the money. Uh, so that's how I ended up uh, in this position. Kind of flat on my back in a way. Although some good things have happened from it. Uh, it's, uh, oh, uh, I've met many more friends, many more uh, people that have been uh, worthwhile. Uh, uh, there's there's a, uh, a flip side to every coin, I guess. There's been some good things that have happened from it and some bad things. Uh, the bad things are the poverty and the, the, the hard luck. Uh, but then the, the good things are the friends that I've met, uh, the, uh, uh, the support that the community can give you when it has a mind to. Uh, sometimes it gets kind of tough. The, the people aren't that willing to help you. But then there are times when somebody will just come barreling out of their house and, and say, come in, I want to give you a, a meal or whatever that will show you some kindness. Uh, that's, that's kind of what we live for now that we've got AIDS. Uh, uh, you have to think of those things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, they called me. Uh, somebody wanted me, how did I find out about Magic Johnson and, and how did I respond? Uh, someone called me on the phone just out of the blue and uh, Magic Johnson has AIDS. 
<laughs> would you care to say something or talk a little bit about it? And uh, uh, I did. I uh, uh, talked over the phone a little bit, uh, told them how I felt. Uh, it's unfortunate when anybody has AIDS. It's a tragedy. And it's, it really is very much too bad that uh, Magic Johnson has uh, AIDS. Uh, but <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been very uh, active with sports. And so uh, when, uh, president, uh, when the president came out and said, uh, uh, well, I want this disease to be cured before he actually gets it. He's only HIV positive. And I, I, I can't help but think back, at least it's been about 10 years, right, Karen? Uh, why wasn't I important enough then 10 years ago? Why does this basketball player get priority over me. He's not that much different. He's not that much better. It's a tragedy of dying. I, you know, I really feel sorry for him, and that's too bad. But uh, sometimes we need to get our heads on straight and decide what is important and what isn't. It's everybody's tragedy that they are dying from AIDS. Uh, and just because you're a, a big deal basketball player doesn't mean that you get an extra life or, or whatever. It's too bad that it's happening, and I commend him for uh, saying that he's going to do what he's going to do, uh, to uh, uh, work with AIDS people, to educate them on safe sex, all that kind of stuff. That's great. That's wonderful. More power to him. And I'm not really angry at Magic Johnson, but I'm a little bit angry at our society and how they pick up on certain types of people and uh, not on others. There are hundreds, thousands of people that are dying from AIDS every day. And yet, President Johnson wants a cure before Magic Johnson gets it. It just kind of... There's a question here. Yeah. yeah. Would you go into, or the doctor into, the preventive methods other than just the term safe sex? I'll let you handle this. <laughs> Well, safe sex is uh, one has to be able to talk about uh, certain practices. Uh, any uh, any uh, practice that exchanges body fluids between human beings, whether that be IV drug use uh, or sexually, puts people at risk of acquiring the virus. So, uh, in sexual encounter, it means wearing condoms. Uh, using dental dams. Um, we must uh, always keep in mind that not all sexuality is intercourse. Uh, there are many ways to express uh, sexual affection or uh, attention without uh, it being intercourse. And uh, it's, it really boils down to don't exchange body fluids. Whether that be sexually or intravenously with IV drug use. I would also add, we said people are dying all the time. In fact, in the United States today, a person is getting the HIV, HIV virus every 15 minutes, or uh, every minute, and a person is dying every 15 minutes. question is, how effective are condoms? Uh, this young lady has heard that non oxidil 9 does not uh, kill the virus, it only kills sperm, uh, and that the virus is so small it can get through condoms. Um, studies that have been done found that non oxidil 9 does uh, help destroy the virus. This virus is not as small as some other viruses. It will not go through a latex condom that is intact. Non-oxidil-9, of course, has been around for a long time as a spermicidal. It does very effective for killing sperm. But to the larger question, how effective are condoms, um, it really comes down to how they are used and stored. Um, the use of a condom is not some, a, 
gift of knowledge that we're born with, and it's an acquired skill, and it uh, behooves all of us to learn how to keep them and how to uh, use them properly. Uh, there is potential of breaking and putting people at risk. Um, uh, and there again, one needs to be a little careful about uh, the product of which you're buying, uh, that it be of good quality uh, and will perform the way you want it to. So it is, uh, condoms are useful um, for AIDS as well as other sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, and uh, uh, they're one of the better, if you're going to uh, engage in intercourse, um, they're one of the better things to be using. Yes. Uh, I, well, I'm not a scientist, is it 10 to 15? De depending on what, which phase you're talking about, um, you, can, you can be infected with HIV and it won't show up for 6 to 12 weeks, I believe, is the, is the time period. So you could actually get tested the day after you were infected and that test would come back negative. So it's always recommended that you get tested again in 6 weeks. Um, so. Um, I'm not really going through any counseling. Uh, I am with the uh, uh, coalition and they're helping me. They help provide me some funds. Uh, through the Medicare and Medicaid uh, and uh, Social Security. Uh, and I have, in change, in turn, uh, helped them with uh, projects and that kind of stuff uh, like this. Um, uh, if, they, if I wanted counseling, I probably could get it. Uh, I probably would get a buddy like Karen that would uh, just kind of be there for me. Uh, I don't know, are, are they qualified to give uh, super duper psychological? No, but he's not qualified to give psychological counseling, but we do refer to people in the community who do this kind of counseling specifically, and we're fortunate here in Ames to have quite a roster of people who are extremely well trained um, in psychology and in counseling to counsel people with AIDS and people who are HIV positive. Yes. Are you on AZT? And have you any reactions? Uh, I'm on AZT and I haven't had any bad reactions at all. <coughs> I, uh, I'm on like five different uh, drugs, the AZT, the Zovirax, um, and three more. <laughs> I don't remember what they're called, I'll just take them. And, and as I mentioned, it's an expensive disease. Uh, AZT pill is $2 a piece, and I take six a day. So that totals up to $300 a month. So, um, yeah, <laughs> hands go up now. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a mountain of red tape, and of course, we're still fighting the system a lot with this because a lot of people don't want to help. Um, a lot of, and I'm saying people, I mean government systems. Um, we need a lot of rules and laws changed in the next little bit to get, get people whipped into shape. We currently um, are dealing, and we have dealt with in the past, some people with AIDS who are homeless, and this is an incredible uh, extra burden on them. Um, first of all, being homeless and the ordeal one has to go through dealing with that and then to have AIDS on top of that. Um, but we do, we have them here in Ames and um, there are systems in place to help them, not very good systems, but there are a sum to help.
Oh, no, I'm not. I just wouldn't feel comfortable. Uh, I could, uh, uh, she wanted to know if I was sexually active now, that I know that I have AIDS, and I'm not. I, uh, uh, I just wouldn't feel right having, uh, uh, possibly given the disease to somebody else, uh, putting them through what I'm going through. It isn't the right thing to do. Uh, so no, I'm not, uh, it's not pleasant, but, uh, I, I, uh, kind of keep away from it. <laughs> question. Yeah. Uh, have you noticed a uh, dramatic difference in your health when she started taking the ADP and the other drugs? Uh, yeah, somewhat. She wanted to know if I have had a dramatic change in health. Um, as, uh, yes. Uh, I'm oh, more tired more often. Um, I, I've had uh, I've had a run-in with spinal meningitis, uh, which uh, uh, hit my spinal cord in my head, and uh, it. One day I woke up and I it was hard for me to handle small sentences, and then uh, by the end of the day I was having problems uh, doing one-word syllables. Uh, so I, that's when I ended up in the Ames Hospital for a week, uh, taking some intravenous uh, IV stuff that goes through. Um, uh, so yeah, there's been a ch health changes, uh, precautions, things to watch out for. But you don't feel like the Ames you? It's hard to tell. It's one of those preventative uh, medicines. Uh, it may be and it may not. I, I think that it is. I think it does make a difference. Uh, I, I feel a little different when I don't take it for a day. If I've gone out of, out of town to take my pills with me, uh, then I can feel that uh, I'm, something's wrong, something's missing. Uh, but other than that, that's about it. There haven't been any uh, dramatic uh, changes. Uh, because of the medicine. I'm, I'm doing pretty well with what they're giving me. Yes? Uh, yes, Medicaid does pay that. Uh, because I was a temporary and I was earning so little money. Even though, the, I, even though I personally was being paid like 16 bucks an hour, I was only taking home 10. So it's, uh, that's where my insurance is. <laughs> They, uh, they, it's quite a racket, uh, but it, it gets you through when you need it. Yes? Have you had to deal with friends, uh, death of friends from AIDS, and um, could you talk about that experience? Mm -hmm. uh, she wants to know if I had to deal with the death of friends with AIDS. And yes, I have. I know uh, probably about 10 or so people that have died from AIDS, having contracted it, or been disabled, whatever. Uh, and it's not easy to do, especially it's not easy now that I've got it. Uh, it uh, makes you think a little bit harder. Uh, the, uh, AIDS is such a sad disease, and it's such an inevitable one once you've got it. You can't get rid of it. You can't get over it. You can keep it at bay, which is what I'm doing with a lot of the, a lot of my medication is what that is for. AIDS kind of slows everything down. Uh, uh, AZT will slow the process down for the cure. Uh, it takes a, uh, takes a little bit longer time for, uh, for AIDS to take over then. Uh, I've got something called Bactrin, which keeps me away from pneumonia. Uh, but doesn't cure me from it. I will always have uh, a tendency to have pneumonia. Uh, same thing with the uh, spinal meningitis. I take a pill every day to make sure I don't get it this afternoon. Uh, and some of those pills are not, a, <laughs> not cheap. Believe me, it's uh, incredible. Um, if anything needs to be changed, it's the price for the medication, that kind of stuff, because that's what really sets you back. Uh, I think understanding is coming for AIDS, that people are beginning to understand what is involved and what you have to do and what you don't have to do to get the disease. The unsafe sex, the uh, exchanged needles and exchanged body fluids. Those are the three ways you can get it. 
Those are the only three ways you can get it. So in some ways, AIDS isn't, isn't an easy disease to get. You have to go out and, and search for those three things. Uh, but then again, uh, once you've got it, you've got it for good. And right now, they don't have a cure. Yeah. <coughs> The question is, uh, what can people look for that would indicate that they have uh, the virus? In some instances, early on after contact, people will have what is known as viremia, which is kind of a mild cold and is really not symptomatically separable from the flu or upper respiratory infections, other virus infections. That's transient. After that, the body has developed antibodies. And after that, you can detect that the person's been exposed. But that individual may go years, absolutely eight, 10, probably longer years, and have absolutely no other symptom um, that they have uh, this virus within them. They're healthy, well, sexually active, leading normal lives, and spreading the virus. Uh, because it's still uh, very much within their system. Um, the early symptoms of uh, advancing illness are uh, uh, weight loss. In Africa, it's called the wasting disease. Um, it's uh, uh, diarrhea. Uh, as Toby had, he presented with pneumonia, uh, fatigue, night sweats, those types of things uh, that just indicate a failing uh, systems. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that uh, people do not know in most cases. Most people with this virus do not know they have it. Uh, and I think that's uh, the fact that uh, uh, this celebrity let it known recently that he had the virus, uh, hopefully will alert the people that there are a large body of people in this country and tens of millions in the world uh, who are at risk or who have the virus. Uh, uh, the, uh, asking about reactions of family and friends. Uh, most were very positive. Uh, positive in that <coughs> they, uh, uh, they didn't shun me or, or uh, try and avoid me. Uh, they were concerned. Uh, they wanted to know how I was and how I was doing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I didn't notice, there were some people that freaked out and didn't know what to do and just kind of avoided me and eventually we parted company. Uh, but most people have behaved fairly responsibly. There's been a, a, a change in within the five years, past five years, of people knowing more about AIDS uh, and knowing how to function with it, uh, how to deal with it with somebody else if, if they've got it. Uh, there's more understanding involved. Uh, and it's better this year than it was last year, and it'll be better next year. People are beginning to understand and become, uh, isn't so much tolerant, but uh, a little more understanding about uh, what's happening to you. Uh, so uh, nobody's really done me a dirty deal or anything like that or made me feel bad. Uh, I feel bad enough myself just having it. And most people realize that and are, uh, they're more interested in, in helping and giving you support and uh, just trying to make what's left of your life as positive as can be. Uh, I guess that's it. Back here. Medical hygiene.
agendas. Well, I'd like to comment on that. I think that that has been turned into some uh, fantastically uh, negative political garbage. Um, the uh, risk of getting uh, AIDS uh, through healthcare workers or dentists is uh, infinitesimally small. Uh, now, if we, the response that has been uh, made politically to that is that we're going to test all healthcare workers. Okay, how often are you going to do that? Um, uh, you, know, you can test me today. Tomorrow, I might have the virus. Uh, you going to, how often are you going to test the uh, uh, tens of thousands of people that are giving health care in this country? I think that's an issue that has just uh, been turned totally upside down. The Centers for Disease Control have developed uh, very extensive guidelines uh, to be followed. Uh, uh, and uh, the profession uh, uh, needs to follow those, and people who are in contact with the profession also need to uh, uh, expect that. Pardon? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Thanks, <laughs> um, I think it's going to turn into a witch hunt. It already has turned into a witch hunt in some states. And um, I think it's a shame, and I, I agree with Dr. Patterson, that um, uh, it's blown way out of proportion, and uh, the likelihood of any of us getting it from a healthcare worker is slim and high. I think you should be more in control of your life. Uh, that uh, while you need to put your health in the hands of the physicians and care people, uh, you need to have a little bit of intelligence about you too, uh, not to get taken in or sucked in by these uh, gossip rumors that fly around. Uh, you need to know what is and what could be, and then make decisions based on that. <coughs> The other dimension of that that I think is extremely important, if in fact we're going to be testing all healthcare workers in this country, the healthcare workers are going to soon demand that all people whom they come in contact with also be tested. Um, and uh, that is something that has been effectively uh, and um, properly resisted uh, to this point, but uh, I think that's, uh, we better be careful what we're asking for. Back. No, I didn't. I think there's a, I, I'm not sure if there's an actually a ward up there, but there is a, a, a care facility regarding AIDS. I wasn't so much isolated, but I was definitely in a, a place where uh, the AIDS people went. Uh, uh, the treatment that I've, and care I've received at Ames has been very good and very solid and helpful. Uh, and they're very rational about it. They, they aren't running around with panic and that kind of stuff. And I was not the only one that they've had. There have been several that have gone through there and had uh, received their care. Uh, a lot of the care just comes from being nice and, and pleasant and, and uh, glad to see you're here kind of thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, what is the test like, and are they like, can you go to any doctor's office and everything? Are you going to go to the special with the expense and things like that? You want to take that one? I'm not sure. I think there is some, uh, the question is, what's the test like, and can you go anywhere to get it? I think one ought to use a little pre thought about getting the test. Yes, it is available uh, many, many places, but there, the difference of the type of test varies. Um, there are testing sites uh, in all states, and Iowa has, uh, I think, 14. Um, the health center on this campus is one of them. Um, we are able, under a federal grant, to uh, give uh, anonymous free testing. So it's possible just to come in and without giving your name or identification, uh, receive a test. Those that are received in private offices or in hospitals and for which you're going to pay uh, 40 to $50 for the test 
will become a part of your permanent medical record. And I think that uh, some pre-thought need to be given to that. The other local test sites available is at the Public Health Service in Des Moines. Uh, the Polk County Public Health Service also is a testing site. Just an added note, if, if, if the testing becomes a part of your medical record, even if it's negative, an insurance company can look at that and think that you're in a high risk group and not cover you. So even if it's negative, it's, it's not a nice thing to have on your record. Yes. Is it not true that in this country it's been focused mainly on the gays getting it? Or worldwide, did I read correctly, the majority of the people are from heterosexual? Yes. Contact? That's very true. Uh, it started out here in the, in the United States with the gay population. Uh, but uh, uh, it's since been found that uh, the heterosexual, the entire population, in fact, the uh, population that is increasing the most is uh, heterosexual females that are of, of childbearing age. So our, our future is in jeopardy. Uh, our childbearers are no longer, they're at risk. Yeah. In general, how long is one expected to live up to the expectancy? It's different, uh, depending on the person. Now, I've always been very healthy and uh, never had a cold in my life, and, and uh, that's uh, served me pretty well up to this point. I haven't had anything really bad happen to me. Uh, other people uh, are, may have some sort of disposition to it and, and uh, go under. Uh, within a year or two. It, it really all depends on how you're made up and what kind of physical exercise, uh, what kind of a healthy life you've led up to that point. Yeah. No worry. How are other countries dealing with AIDS patients and not being infected HIV, specifically in a research context? It seems to me we ought not to expend double expense. The question is, how are other countries responding to uh, this virus, particularly in a research model? Well, there are many parts of the world that have, that have the highest incidence of this problem, whose uh, uh, health care dollar uh, is, doesn't extend beyond 8 to $10 a year per person, and a single test can cost $20 to run. So many of those countries are approaching the problem with uh, total um, looking the other way, uh, ignore, ignoring it. There are areas in the world that are doing a tremendous amount of research, and particularly Europe, and uh, particularly in Europe and France, uh, are doing a very effective research. And yes, there is cooperative effort between those companies. Uh, there's a great effort to develop uh, vaccines or an effective uh, preventative. Uh, in the beret. The question is, uh, what are they working for more towards the uh, uh, helper T cells or the C4 protein type uh, coverage? In fact, uh, the vaccines that are now in clinical trial are aimed at several different areas that are felt to be vulnerable for this virus. Um, and many of them are conceived in totally different ways. So there's a whole breadth of research going on um, that uh, hopefully in time will pay off. But we must keep in mind that if we have in a laboratory today the effective vaccine, it's probably going to be 10 to 20 years before we can begin to see uh, an effective application of that. Uh, the whole issue of who's going to be used uh, to be testing the vaccine is a big one. And right now, uh, the third world is being targeted for that. Um, so uh, uh, the, the answer to your question is that the research is really going on in all areas. This is a potentially vulnerable virus. It's not like any other normally functioning cellular physiology. So uh, it is vulnerable.
we're going to find something for it. Yes. It would depend on my, uh, on the numbers, on whether or not I would be cured or I would feel better after it. Uh, you can take all sorts of cures and nothing happens. If I was fairly well assured that uh, uh, I would have results from it that would be positive, then I would, uh, I would consider it. Uh, but I'm not going to waste my time getting pumped full of needles and that kind of stuff to have nothing happen, which I've had happen. So, yeah. Um, yeah. The question is, perhaps all you heard of, what makes one person get the full syndrome of AIDS and uh, acquired that uh, sexually um, are uh, uh, statistically have a longer period before they develop the full-blown AIDS. So the whole issue of things that support us from other diseases, good health, good support, good emotional uh, uh, life, all those things help prevent the onset of the uh, infection. Stress, poor nutrition, other challenges will make it come on earlier. I think before we lose the whole crowd of classes and so forth, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our panel today, Dr. Patterson, Toby Richard, and Karen Phillips. And we'd like to tell you about the cool event coming tomorrow and Saturday. I'll be Saturday. We serve two sections that will um, be displayed. And we will open up for a couple more questions before we call it a close. There's one more back there. Is, is anything being done to uh, implement required courses? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, has it worked yet? No. Um, but uh, I'm very interested in seeing the opportunity made available for people to be able to learn more about sexuality and uh, risk taking in general. And, uh, there are a number of people who have met this fall and are trying to develop some curricular approach to that. Those things take time. 
Uh, they take support both from faculty, staff, and students. Uh, so we'll keep working at it. I would like to take a chance to particularly thank Toby for the uh, tremendous work he has done in this community in the time he's been here. I, uh, I've been involved, as I say, with the issue of HIV infection and AIDS for some time. And Many of the places I go, people say, oh, do you know Toby? Well, this is the first time I've met Toby, but uh, I've heard of his being here because he's just been tremendously effective spokesperson for our concerns. And uh, I want to thank him for spending his time today and uh, sharing with us uh, who he is now. Because as Toby uh, alluded to earlier, that Toby has a people family, people support, and has a brother along with him. They've been at Tuna Courageous also. I'd like to remind you or suggest to you that you watch what you're doing, that uh, just out of your safety sake, yes, but also in dealing with other people. You never know who might have AIDS or is coming down with it. <coughs> and something that helps me and helps everybody that, just, that has AIDS is a support system. It's someone that they know, well, things are rough, but uh, this is okay. This guy likes me. I can get along now. Uh, we need to support each other as human beings. Uh, uh, it is so desolate out there with AIDS having a, a, a disease that can kill people and nobody really, there's still a question about how you're getting it and all this, all, all this other kind of stuff and how you can prevent it from, from getting it yourself. Uh, uh, think a little bit of the other person that you're dealing with and uh, what may be going through their minds with the support they need from AIMS, the community. It doesn't necessarily have to be just from you, but uh, maybe a little bit of help. Maybe you're at a bake sale for an hour uh, that you wouldn't have been. Uh, little helpful things like that are going to make the difference when this thing uh, finally ends, and it will. AIDS will prob finally be wiped out of the picture. It may be a couple of years, but uh, it'll finally be a past event. Uh, and all of you here need to work on it. Uh, like when we did within stitches, and I encourage you to come and see the show Friday and Saturday. Uh, it, it's the dealing with people together and helping work and, and getting a project and, and making it come true. Uh, and the same kind of thing with you guys. Uh, if all you need to do is just kind of react and be a friend, uh, shake somebody's hand, that can be all that it takes. There's a lot of uh, emphasis on the uh, uh, physical ailment of AIDS, but not on the social stigma that you may have when you have AIDS. And it really is important to have someone that can just come up by your side and say, you're doing okay, you're, you're fine, uh, just keep on trucking. That's what we need nowadays. Yeah, one last. <laughs> Um, I think uh, Dr. Shavel's uh, remembering Richard Keeling and his visit here, who uh, made an observation that is totally true, um, that uh, most sexual risk-taking is done under uh, the influence of alcohol. In fact, he put it this way, that under the influence of alcohol, we often find ourselves having sex with someone who, when sober, we wouldn't have lunch with. And, uh, I think uh, it is those situations that put people at greatest risk for uh, acquiring this disease and, frankly, many others. Uh, so alcohol is an extremely important part of our social structure that needs to be approached warily. I think that's all the time we have for questions.